What's going on, Digital Wildcatters? Welcome to another week of the Oil & Gas Startups Podcast. We got my guy, Clinton, from Gunner Energy Services down here. A, uh, we were just bonding before the podcast. We were talking about uh, how war I broke. Stories. Yeah, war stories broke out on Canadian rigs. Uh, I had a, my driller was a, a newfie and couldn't fucking understand them. Uh, when he got drunk, so of course I had I had to tell Clinton about those. But I see some uh, bottles in the corner. Don't give me any of that, or you're going to need a translator. I mean, you need a translator yeah. in here. Yeah, this uh, is this is an audio format. People yeah. need to be able to understand you. So. I don't know what it is about Canadians, man, but we either like really hit them off of like most Canadians, yeah. or we just can't fucking stand them. Or you don't like? Them. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Uh, I'm not going to call anybody out. There's a few that we just there's can't stand. Canadian smugness is not good. Like yeah. there's this, is there's, there certain areas where they're more smug than others. I don't know. I, you know, I just like, there's, Quebec. there's a thought. That, <laughs> I'll uh, put it out there. <laughs> I can see where this is podcast. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, um, mm, for a lot of, for a long time, they would say, you know, the, the thought was that Americans have the sense of superiority. Yeah. But I hear Canadians opining all the time about how great their healthcare system is, how great they don't have gun, they don't have all these things, and and maybe there's some legit, legitimacy to that. Yeah. But it gets old hearing yeah. about it sometimes, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it can go both ways, I so guess. So you're, uh, you're in Bakersfield now, right? Yeah, uh, you got right, it. So tell me, uh, what is Gunner Energy? What do you guys do? Yeah, so Gunner Energy Service is a service company, uh, and it's not a – it's a – it's uh, meant to uh, produce these uh, tools, uh, these uh, magnetic ranging instruments and other technology, but we actually run that service too. So what is this, ma the, the whole base of the business is magnetic ranging, okay? What's that all about? We want to determine a relative proximity between two well bores. And there's a bunch of reasons why you might want to do that. Yeah. Uh, you might want to purposely intersect wells, yeah. right? So they do that for production methods. Um, and, you know, I'm talking about all production methods now, not just hydrocarbons, right? So <clears throat> a coal bed methane intersection, they're actually intersect two wells for dewatering of the water and produce the gas out. But now the technology is being used, for example, for uh, geothermal. So you yeah. might want to come down and intersect two wells to do some kind of heat flow yeah. or heat transfer stuff, right? Yeah. So anyways, Gunner Energy Services makes these ranging tools. So we have a physicist, electrical engineers, all this to the full accoutrement, right? All the... All, all the, the smart people. Yeah, right? yeah. Not like us guys. Right? <laughs> yeah. Not allowed to say that, right? Yeah. 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 We're the same, right? Hey, man, it's free range in here. Yeah, not, like us. Right. <laughs> yeah. not like us. So, uh, uh, yeah. And, but we also provide service at the wellhead. So we'll go to the well and 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 run the tools and do all these kind of things. Now, so this this is, I got questions. Sure. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the term was magnetic ranging. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So one. Um, you know, a couple different applications um, to measure well bores. You know, parent-child uh, interference has exactly. also been an issue too. Do you guys, I mean, is there Absolutely. applications for that? Now you got, because you're a driller, right? So you know yeah. all about that. You're coming off the whip stock. Yeah. You're hot. Yeah. You're going to be in a zone of interference. When are you going to clean up? Well, you can use a gyro to get away. You can use, you can just blindly steer away. Or you let's, can use let's dive into those a little bit. Magnetic ranging. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah like, I don't know anything about this. any of that. Yeah, yeah. Let's break this down like. The, the basics for people oh, cool. that may not yeah, know. All right. so, well, look. Yeah, yeah. Look. Don't, don't assume that me, Jake, or anyone listening knows knows what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, well, so. but but how many hours do you guys have here? That I've got an hour or so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once upon a time. No. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, okay. Uh, well bore, uh, we, we want to drill an earthen well bore. We want to put a hole in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to understand where the well bore is placed subsurface so that it hits the pay zone or we don't hit another well or it avoids some kind of legal encroachment. You know, you can't yeah. go on someone's land or whatever. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well bore surveying is how we do it. Right. So, uh, that's been around for like a hundred years and, uh, but it's increasingly more sophisticated methods, but where we are at today is basically any, uh, measurement wall drilling system has a device just like in our phone that can tell the direction that it's pointed and it's tilt. Right, mm -hmm. so inclination azimuth, yeah, and then it'll give us a, a tool face or an angle at which the ah, I, I always mess this up. It's basically the direction that your motor is pointed, so you can deviate the well bore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we deviate well bores by having a very small bend in a mud motor, about a degree and a half, and over you know depth and uh, over some amount of measure depth. If you point that bend in the mud motor, it will begin to deviate. Okay, good. So we can make deviated well bores. 
Now we need to measure the deviation so we can understand where is that in three-dimensional space subsurface so mm -hmm. we can yeah. intersect well. We're miles or, down. We have yeah. no clue. That's right. So you're, it's a, another good analogy is, is not mine, uh, but uh, John Wright used to say, he's a famous uh, relief well guy, imagine you're, you're flying in a plane from here to Fort Worth and you're you know, like 10,000 feet or something like that and you're looking down on the ground and you're trying to hit this target that's the size of a pie plate, right? So a lot of times oil and gas, we think big picture like acreages and drainage and all this. And, you know, all you look at all these little wells on a, on a, a, a bird's eye view. Yeah. And it looks like they're all just right next to each other. They're thousands of feet deep, thousand feet apart, all this kind yeah. of stuff. Right. So our world is more the kind of the, the, the focusing in on this kind of stuff and understanding the nuance of the trajectory and, and, and all this. Right. So it's important then to think about, um, uh, you know, getting back to the to the question, it's important then to think about with what level of precision, precision you do this, and more importantly, uh, when you measure these well bores, what kind of errors do you have? This is not a this is not like GPS under the ground here, guys. Mm -hmm. so yeah. GPS, you can get satellites, and uh, I think now this thing can be within an inch. You know where yeah. it is. We're doing dead reckoning downhole. So we have three values that we use to understand where we are: measure depth, how much pipe is in the hole the tilt, inclination, the azimuth direction. And we integrate or mathematically look through all those points and understand then where our well is actually placed. Okay, so this is how surveying works, modern surveying, drilling a well on the ground. What if I want to drill another well to hit the first well? Okay, so let's here's the, here's the case everyone gets uh, excited about, a blowout, right? And I've done many of those. I used to work with wild well control, went all around the world doing all that. And, you know, it's, it's fun stuff, right? But uh, Let's say we have a well that's on fire, okay? So you lost control of the well. How do we reestablish uh, or, or reestablish control over the well? If you can't do it from surface, you can intersect from below and then circulate your mud around and dynamically kill the target well bore, as they say, right? So that's one possible use. Now, if I have a well that was drilled and I wanna hit it and it's thousands of feet away from me, okay? Its position has only been determined by that set of three measurements that I told you, measure depth, inclination, azimuth. Mm -hmm. Each one of those has some error. So this downhole position, the point where I'm trying to aim, it's not actually there. It's, that's our best approximation of where it is, but it has some error, okay? So if I drill down to hit this thing, it's not like you can just drill right to a point in paper and, and we're supposed to hit the well. It, will, it could be 100 feet off if mm -hmm. you just did that based on surveying alone. So now we have this introduction of this concept of magnetic ranging, okay? Okay. What is this thing? You put this thing in the hole and it, it either makes a signal or detects a signal. There's various iterations of this, right? But basically, uh, the simplest version is that it emits electrical energy that creates uh, a signal on the target well. It's a, it's a, magnet, it's a, um, a magnetic field, okay? And that magnetic field is sampled from this tool that I make, this ranging tool. And then it tells us from where we are in space, bottom hole, that the target well is, let's say, to the north, 10 feet away. Yeah. So now I can drill that way. It doesn't care about any of the other measurements that were taken, the ink, as no, it's relative. It's a relative measurement. And now when you have this relative measurement and you know what to do with it, right? So you got to be able to get the relative measurement and then action it. You can do crazy stuff like intersecting well bores in all weird ways, intersecting well bores to do dynamic kills, drilling underneath roads for uh, electrical power installation. That's actually say. what I was just about to get to because on Twitter the other day, someone asked, hey, can we not use horizontal drilling for underground uh, transmission line bearing? Yeah. And I just drew it out on a piece of paper just to think about the mechanics. And I was like, you're gonna have to do a lot of intersections and well bores to essentially thread your line through. Um, and so this whole time you're talking, I'm like, oh, you could use this to, yeah, to do sure. that. That's yeah, I've done all kinds of, all kinds of stuff with this. Like, um, uh, let me think. Here's a, here's a, here's a crazy one. Now we got to, I usually do this with a whiteboard, right? But we got to imagine now being, imagine you're in the well bore, okay? And there's an obstruction at 8,000. <laughs> That's tight in there. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And there's an obstruction at 8,000 feet. Okay. And we must mm -hmm. get around the obstruction and place cement below it, lest the well will never be properly abandoned, okay? So this is for a plug-in abandonment. I'm describing a, 
uh, a well that I did in Los Angeles, yeah. in Los Angeles, in the city proper, right? So um, I've worked on a well right in the middle of a golf course in Los Angeles. Yeah, right. At the end of a driving range, we're <laughs> exactly. on the walkover rig, and they're just sitting there trying to fucking nail us with golf balls. <laughs> That's exactly it, right? <laughs> so uh, th this is in LA proper now. But we have an obstruction at 8,000 feet. So what we're going to do is come down, cut a hole or mill out of the target well, drill alongside it, and then drill and mill and re-enter the target well. Mm -hmm. Not get close to it and bang up against it or, or something, you know, any of this. Physically, from the outside, back in, cut mm -hmm. a hole with a mill, okay? And then get an assembly inside the original target well. So you go down the motherboard. It's like a reverse whip stock, yeah. essentially. <laughs> you go down the motherboard come off the motherboard and get back into the motherboard in a thousand feet. Yeah. So every set that you make, that every directional move that you make has to be perfect or it's not going to work. Right. When we align on that target well, for example, we align with accuracy that is within a fraction of a degree. So we want to arrive and have a relative angle to the target of three degrees, not three and a half, not two and a half, three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is, um, an order of magnitude, but it's much more complex than typical directional drilling. Typical directional driller is going to project to the bit, ah, maybe I got 90, maybe it's 90 and a half, something like that. You mm -hmm. know, I think I'll spin one down, rotate. I have a dropping tendency in the lateral, so I'll just rotate. Yeah. Not today, not with us. That rotating could be a degree difference. Now we can't mill, we can't re-enter. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we're talking about, you know, really high fidelity, you know, at, at the, the utmost attention to detail and accuracy to be able to do this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it's funny. I'm just kind of getting flashbacks as you're talking about the evolution of surveying because I broke out on old Kelly rigs, right? Mm -hmm. And we're just drilling vertical wells. And the way that we'd survey is you had just this, this hard line, the steel line, dummy line. And you'd run a survey tool and you literally just drop it down the hole. And then my job as a motor hand was I have to sit there and I have to watch this reel go down to, you know, 10,000 feet. And it's just, and the second that you start to see some slack on the line, you have to slam down on the brake. If you're daydreaming and paying attention, you lose that tool down hole and you got to trip up and they'll fucking run your ass off. Yeah. And uh, very primitive. You bring it back up. Uh, we were fortunate. We were able to actually plug it into a computer, but not long before that, you had a chart and yep. <laughs> you would chart it out. And, uh, Anyways, a funny story here is uh, right when I got in wireline, I started running pipe recovery and I got to this well and they had an 18 uh, degree uh, deviation in a vertical. And, um, <laughs> and how does that yeah. happen? And like you really like kind of just like rule of thumb was like you had a three degree uh, tolerance. Yeah, so if you're, yeah, if you're under three degrees, you're good. Um, but they got 18 degrees out and I was just like, Jordan guys, so I'm like, asleep. yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how'd y'all get that far out? And he's like, we just thought the tool was wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's like a go. typical roughneck answer. Yeah. We just thought the tool was wrong. Yeah, and yeah. so anyways, yeah, I had a cement the whole well boring time drill. I got to uh, pick up on that story. Uh, um, cool thing about the industry, right? Is that everyone says, because we're going plugging these wells and the wells are all shit. Yeah, uh, uh, something that Gunner does is plugging a lot of the well bores, right? That's yeah. the majority of our business is plugging these wells. Yeah. Right? And, you know, you get against them and they're, you know, 100 years old or something like this. And apart, you know, I, I said that we need to intersect the well at a certain degree, right? Well, I have to understand what its trajectory is, okay? Yeah. And a part of what forms that is those three va variables, measured up ink as. Yeah. And see, I'm looking back on records that are 100 years old and, and where you use a single shot surveying technique of the variety that you described. Yeah. You just <laughs> mentioned the various ways and that technique is fallible to, you know, human, uh, you know, not, a human not running it properly, for example. Right. But this is what I have to rely on as we hunt down, chase down these abandoned wells and, you know, intersect and plug them. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I guess the, the moral of the story is more often than not, the data is correct. Hundred year old data <laughs> we're using to intercept the wells. Um, Here's an example. So the survey data is correct. Here's an another example. I once looked at records and it said stuff like, uh, we abandoned the well with telephone poles or, or light or <laughs> yeah, they you know, just logs. Shit down there. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, yeah, it's stupid. Or, you know, it's 100 yeah. years old. Just ignore it, you know? Yeah. And uh, we go in the hole and we tag up within a foot of where this pole is. <laughs> yeah, this pole. And start milling and get start wood milling on back. And got it. I'll show you the pictures, man. And it was cedar. Uh, cedar uh, pole. Yeah. They said it in the records. Yeah. By God, 
it was cedar. I've heard that. Yeah, that's using, cool, using that's tele, wild. Using yeah, telephone that's wild. poles, tires, yep. all kinds of crazy shit. Oh, yeah, so they just say it right in the records yeah. as well. <laughs> Drop one pole, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that's and then so they just funny. go bail a little bit of cement on top yeah. of it and call her good, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I used to back in the day we'd run wire line and just like bail some cement, and I'm out here like mixing cement and just like a we'd have a 55 gallon barrel that we cut in half, and I'm just out there mixing it with a shovel. I'm like, this is not scientific yeah. <laughs> at all. <laughs> We're just gonna mix it and dump it down there. I had this old hand wire line hand. He's like, got to pour some Coca Cola in there to retard it, and so he'd he'd. Uh, pour one can of Coke in, and I'm like, fuck yeah, we're, like, <laughs> this is some chemistry right That's here. That's wild. You're like, so funny between the contrast of all the technical yeah. shit you're saying and then that, and like, that is the oil field. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, um, uh, I think th that's one of the reasons why actually, um, not that I'm successful, but one of the reasons that that's, it's helpful is that I started on the rigs and I have an appreciation for all that. Yeah. And when I was growing up, you know, my, my old man was like, you know, you, we work for a living around here. Yeah. So we, you know, we work with our hands. That's what we do. Yeah. But he was also very strict about school. But in the meantime, though, I guess what I'm getting at is the oil field is a weird mashup of that. You know, one minute I'm talking about, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds and mashing down weight and trying to get build rates and this kind of stuff. And then I might get a call from the physicist and talk about you know, how many <laughs> nano Tesla the Earth's magnetic field has diverged because the <laughs> yeah. ionosphere is active, or, you know, or whatever. Yeah, right? Northern yeah. Lights are up and running. Yeah, it's right? fucking so, with our magnetic pulses. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. actually one thing that uh, I I remember my first week of roughnecking on the rig. I come home and I tell my grandma, I'm like, this place is fascinating because these are a bunch of rednecks and just rough people. I was like, but they understand physics and yeah. they understand mechanics. I was like, there's nothing on that rig that they can't fix yeah. with minimal resources. They know what's going on. And so you have this contrast of like rough people, work with your hands. Yeah. I mean, just very blue collar, but also just this deep layer of understanding of science. And yeah. um, I, I think that that's super interesting point that probably a lot of people can't appreciate. Yeah. I, you know, uh, all this work that I do, for example, you know, people look at me probably have a, a prejudgment of the way that I behave and act and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, but, uh, there's no doubt, but they would never believe. Okay. Uh, in that prejudgment that I spend five hours a day with a physicist talking about, you know, uh, as stuff as complex with magnetics as the normal person will ever yeah. uh, come across in their life. Right. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's really neat that the, way. Um, the tech, I don't want to get too in the weeds of how the technology actually works because, um, uh, one, I won't understand it anyways. So, um, but how does it how does it work? Is there a high level way? To I'll, no, I'll tell you exactly. Actually... If look, if I can't explain to you guys how it works, I don't know how it works. Yeah, right? there's no way. Yeah. So that's all this like uh, this hand waving and you know trying and, and well, you wouldn't understand. That's all BS. If anyone can't explain anything, yeah, yeah, because they don't know. Yeah, they're faking their way yeah. through it. Yeah. So, oh shit, let me see if I can explain. <laughs> this. All right, now, on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Time is now. <laughs> Okay, here's a here's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, water takes the path of least resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So water is lazy. We we say that uh, uh, electricity is lazy as well. It takes the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Don't short out, you know, two lot of wires, or it'll go through your arms, kill you, right? This yeah. kind of stuff. Okay, good. So uh, the system that we have is a three part system. This tool that we lower in the hole. Okay, and there we have many many tools, but here's just one. This is the tool for a blowout. Okay, okay? so. If we have a well that's on fire, I want to drill another well to get close to it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to deploy this magnetic ranging tool. So I pull the BHA out of the hole and I go back in with this wireline assembly. And the wireline assembly has three parts. On bottom is a probe. It just looks like an MWD probe. Okay. Then you have an insulative bridle. So it's just a piece of uh, wire line that will not allow any electrical energy to come down and destroy the tool. Yeah. Right? So it's like an insulator, like an EM gap sub. Think about it like that. Yeah. And then you have an electrode, which emits electrical energy. So here's what we're going to do. This is all tethered with a seven conductor wire line. We're going to have two of the seven conductors used for communications to that probe I spoke of, right? So I can talk to my tool back and forth. Hey, tool, you, you're alive? Yes. Okay, tell me what you see. Here comes the data. The other five lines are used to inject current into the formation. So these five conductors come down. They are shorted to this electrode and current flows into the formation. Mm -hmm. And it wants to return to the 
return of the power supply that's driving it. And the power supply is back up on surface in a wireline truck. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm the I'm an electron in the formation, ten thousand feet below <laughs> surface, and I'm looking this around. This is some magic school bus shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm looking around in the darkness, and I'm saying, where can I go? And I see this huge piece of steel, a huge pipe that runs like looks like infinitely, you know, high that way and, and going that way. And if I'm an electron and I'm looking for the path of least resistance, this looks like a cool place to go. Yeah. So now then I should have convinced you I have current that wants to flow on the target well back to surface. Yeah. Current that flows on any conductor will have associated with it a magnetic field. Okay. That's like chicken and egg. If you have a magnetic field, there's current flowing around. Does the current always flow up? Ah, it flows up and down. Actually, it's AC, so it's it's alternating. It's flowing up, down, up, down. Okay. Down, yeah. Right. Uh, but you would think that it would flow up, but it doesn't. It, mm. it could flow up, down, because it, it just sees that pipe and says, "I want to be on the pipe. Yeah, I want to flow pipe. on the yeah. pipe. I want, I, I want, <laughs> yeah. I want e an easy life. Right. Yeah. So now, if you have this current that flows on a conductor, okay, we have this dude Ampere said a couple hundred years ago, you use your right hand if you point your thumb in the direction of current flow and wrap your fingers around, that is the magnetic field that will be around any current carrying conductor, mm. right? So if I look at it this way, here's my target well. I have current flowing up and down the well, right? It's a vertical well. So if I point my thumb like this, wrap my fingers around, here are the magnetic field lines. Those are the field lines that the probe senses and 90 degrees or tangent to that magnetic field line is always the direction to the target. So we make a magnet, okay, blast lazy current, it collects on the pipe, it makes a magnetic field, sample it with magnetometers, do some math, direction to target, drill towards it, kill it. That's awesome. Yeah, right? I wish we had like an animator that could yeah. like animate. Uh, Clinton is like an no, like, just, no, no, like Joe Rogan no, tune. No, yes, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What I was yeah, That's yeah, what we need to get. I'm probably actually going to find someone just to do this. Hey, yes. Your you face should. on an electron. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it would be like that, right? Yeah. And now you're in your town hall. You're looking around. Where are you? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you said you had uh, several tools. Are they always ran off a wireline or do any of them go in the drilling? Yeah, go do it while drilling, right? Okay. Uh, so a different style tool while drilling, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm doing a, a huge project right now making a wild drilling ranging tool for geothermal. Yeah. Uh, specifically for geothermal. Yeah. And um, I can't say a lot about that yeah. particular project, but the scope of it is amazing. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's, it's pretty yeah. neat. That's so, awesome. Yeah. The, 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 the tool, this is oh, it's the other thing, man, I, I don't think the industry gets a lot of credit for, right? Is that all the technology and the expertise in oil and gas. It will be what drives transition and, and the uh, uh, cleaner, greener technologies, right? Yeah. They're not, it's not one versus the other. It's I, this technology, everything that I learned in oil and gas, I'm now just pivoting right over and applying it to geothermal drilling, right? It's an amazing thing, actually. Yeah, I think we, we, we've down. been seeing this and it's big mission for digital wildcatters is teach everyone in energy. Like, one, you're the most technical workforce in the world in oil and gas. A lot of smart motherfuckers running yep. around here that understand physics mm. and building out uh, infrastructure and things of that nature. And, um, yeah, it, it's funny because, like, at our event, event that's coming up in October, Fuse, uh, we have a couple of electric frack uh trucks Ooh. coming out that are badass and the cool thing is is like hey those are using geothermal yeah. as well right yeah. and so um i mean many of the technologies that are developed by people here are apples to apples to, to geothermal here's another one uh, i agree everything you said here's another one uh this whole thing this you know drilling relief wells it was developed because you got oil and gas wells that blow out yeah right mm -hmm. but now the exact technology that was literally invented for that is being used, for example, me using it to abandon the wells. So it goes from the complete life cycle of the well, right? So yeah. once again, you see the technology that came up to enable and power the drilling and production of hydrocarbons now being uh, utilized mm -hmm. for uh, the end of life cycle of the well, right? And and to add on to that, you know, CO2 uh, injection and That's capture. That's a big one. Yeah, I mean, here's a... We, we're used to producing and injecting whether it's produced water or co2 floods and now yep. hey we can also a lot of steam it. out there in cali yep. yeah <laughs> so let me tell you about a little bit some interesting stuff about that right 
Um, another application for ranging is in carbon capture, sequestration, or any type of CO2 flood, mm -hmm. or any type of gas storage. So here's a story for you. Tell me more. Yeah, we have a particular customer, right? And they charge up a old depleted zone full of gas that they buy on market, right? So they charge up that, that zone and then produce it back in the winter when gas prices are higher and that gives them savings for their customer, right? Yeah. So far, so good, good. Problem is, is this old field that they're using is littered with historic vertical wells yeah. that were drilled back in the day that are now, uh, they're off production depleted. But if they weren't cemented or abandoned properly, what happens when you try to charge up the field with your gas that you're going to produce back out later? Well, it leaks up through these vertical well bores. Mm -hmm. So in this case, let's say they charge up however many billion, then they lose a fraction of the billion of the gas when they go to produce it back out because it's leaked yeah. to atmosphere. Yeah. Not good for the environment. You didn't get any use out of the molecules. Insane, yeah. right? Same thing for carbon like, capture. Like money. Yeah. Yeah. So if we want, so the idea is, oh, we can capture carbon uh, right at the source, inject it back into wells, carbon's downhole. Perfect, right? Easy. Well, you can't go charge up a zone that has a litany of vertical wells that are not plugged. It'll mm -hmm. just leak back out, right? So uh, this magnetic ranging, more and more, we're seeing uses in uh, like civil engineering. Uh, uh, we were talking about roadways, that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, for example, there's another, uh, another uh, project where they did a bunch of drilling and actually a town over top of the drill site because of subsidence is starting to crack like the foundations of buildings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in that case, uh, uh, the wells that are problematic need to be intersected and filled with cement. So it's like, uh, it's as much construction as it is ES, uh, like an ESG energy type thing, yeah. you know, like, uh, uh, um, uh, alternate means of, of energy production. It is oil and gas, yeah. full cycle oil and gas. It's, it's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a niche technology, but yeah. More and more, we're seeing uses in various across various industries. Yeah, for sure. Um, this this technology is it. I mean, are the major OFS companies doing it? Tell me about how you got like one. What was your background? Yeah. Usually, we go straight into someone's background, but uh, the pretty fascinating magic school bus magic trip school was, bus was fun. Yeah, it was, that was, that was, was, that was a good ride. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> how did how did you get into this? What was your background before? Kind of give us some context there. Yeah, sure. So uh, I, uh, let's see, what's a good place to start? I went to school in uh, Newfoundland, Canada. And in Newfoundland, uh, I studied electrical engineering. Uh, but when I was about to graduate or going to graduate, it was something like 19% unemployment in my town, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you're, you're, you're in a bind. Yeah. You want to try to find a yeah. job. It's going to be, yeah. you're waiting for someone to retire or die, this kind of thing, right? Yeah. No offense to my hometown or anything. It's just, there's not a lot of jobs. It just yeah. wasn't, right? So uh, it was actually Halliburton that came to my school and hired me uh, directly on a work term to go there and, and, and do work. And uh, the very first job that I ever went on in Western Canada as an MWD hand, they were running ranging for steam-assisted gravity drainage. Okay. And the guy that was the MWD hand running that tower, uh, who showed me how to do this, uh, he ended up being my business partner later. But, but anyways, <laughs> uh, I, I had, I, I did this range, I, you know, I was working on this ranging with Halliburton and they were the only company really that was doing it. And they had acquired their technology from a group called Vector Magnetics, which I admire and respect very much. Uh, but anyways, I was, I was with them and using that technology for to do relief wells and uh, plug it up animus, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we did a big relief well in Kuwait. And my current business partner was with Wild Well Control. And he came over there and we did a relief well together. And after the relief well, he said, hey, man, you want to join Wild Well Control? Like so much fun over here. <laughs> and I was 27. I'm like, yeah. Did you so go over there? Oh, dude. Dude. Crazy. Is, I'll show you the videos. You know, was like crazy stuff on fire. Did all that. It was, was like, super fun. That was stuff. like my dream to go on Wild Well Control. Dude, like, well, Wild Well is a cool place to work. Yeah, fuck it yeah, is. It is. Yeah, it it's got to be Think with the content we could create with Wild Well. No, I know. That's what and, I told And, and uh, Boots and Coots, like all these guys. Yeah, that's All I, these guys. Hawk, uh, he, he's over there and he's making TikTok content now on uh, on. It's, blowouts and shit. And I'm like, damn, man, this is look, man. I'll show you some. Want to see some TikTok content on blowouts? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see some TikTok content. Uh, let me see here. Look at this one. 
I, well, control is, is, is crazy. There's no doubt. Our podcast listeners about to, oh, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, that's good. Cool. So anyways, I was going all around the world. Our podcast li- listeners. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I hate this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's, on, it's on video, guys. Yeah. You can, their ears are blown out now. <laughs> uh, so uh, I was going all around doing that as a young guy. That's super exciting, right? But every time at Wildwell, you know, it's, okay, there's a relief well. Oh, what do we do? Oh, well, call Halliburton. Like, just, you know, that's, that's what you do every time. And now, look, I'm a, I, I was an entrepreneur when I was a little kid, you know, doing stuff in university to get through, right? So I wasn't adverse to you know, entrepreneurial activities. And uh, I'm sizing this up and I was like, you got to call the same people every single time for something this important. Like, there's no other better way <laughs> ever it can ever be done. Like, the same people who did it for 30 years, that's the, uh, they figured it out singularly <laughs> perfect that time. And I'm like, now, nah. now I'm animated like a, you know, Adam Smith, like a, like a <laughs> marionette at this yeah. point. I'm like, dude, this is not, that doesn't make any sense. Right. There, there must be, must be a better way or it at least needs competition because yeah. that makes everyone better. Yeah. So I quit while well and started a company called Marksman Ranging and me and that guy and another dude, uh, Troy and Sean, the guy that I walked into the very first job ever as an MWD hand, uh, the three of us, we made ranging tools and we sold them to uh, Scientific Drilling in 2015. That was acquired by Scientific Drilling. Awesome. And then I stayed there uh, at SDI to you know, transfer the technology and make sure it's working and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, as soon as I was done there, I started my own company uh, immediately, which cool. was Gunner Energy Services. I started that <clears throat> in uh, 2019. 2019. Yeah. Now I could not be, get to work. Uh, so I was doing, you know, certain types of work because uh, I had non-competes and this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So I, I was doing just strictly well control uh, mm-hmm. in 2019. And I started, I started, I, I'm, I'm building up to this on purpose for you guys. I started uh, around the, some actual like building ranging tools. We started doing that around the time that oil was negative $35. Yeah. Same time you guys started. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good time to start. It's a great, it's great aesthetic. Aesthetic. <laughs> we feel it. <laughs> yeah. So that's um, I've been doing ranging for like twenty years. Uh, yeah. With uh, you know, and I've worked with all the different service providers of the technology. Uh, I am the maker manufacturer of two of the three systems that uh, exist cool. in the market. Yeah. So um, so with the whole deal with SDI, is that why you don't you don't have that kind of drilling application today? Or the technology no. is totally different. I uh, know it's technology very similar. Okay. Uh, I'm just competing head to head with them. And I also have, um, yeah. So, okay. So a little bit more about, the, about, you know, I described this wireline and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Right. So one of the big problems that I had uh, is that, um, you know, when I was with Wildwell or, or before I went in on my own is that it was, it's always been done with a wireline. Now, look, yeah. Jay, you guys know that, We've been running MWD since 90s, at least. Right? Yeah. That's been mature technology for 20 mm-hmm. years, minimum. And what was before that? It was the wireline, right? So you'd wireline in these tools and drop it and all that stuff you were just describing, right? So ranging is still a lot of wirelining, mm-hmm. right? Why is it still? Why is that? You know, there always be a need for wireline tools, but very little advancement. I'll tell you why. Because it was a monopoly. Yeah. There was only one player, right? <laughs> so my whole uh, idea was we have to get rid of this uh, wire lining. We have to move to wild drilling because I can see um, that the market is going to need this if we are to meaningfully address this legacy that we have of abandoned wells, for example. Or if we are to be able to install geothermal uh, heating systems with efficiency. It's, it's one thing to say, I can drill mm-hmm. geothermal, but can you do it fast enough to make it economically viable, right? Mm-hmm. So, or it's one thing to say, I need to abandon 100,000 wells in California in the next 10 years. Let's say you have that goal. If each well takes a month and a half to do, that's not a reasonable goal, okay? The ranging industry, if the r- ranging service needs to be improved in terms of service delivery by something like 10x. That, and I see that, um, you know, in terms of speed, right? Mm-hmm. And I see that as being 
uh, attainable. It's that that's that's it's a challenge, but it can be done. I'm doing it. I have done it. So we have a new uh, magnetic ranging while drilling technology that we're going to trial here in the next couple months, right? For example, if that works, when it works, okay, it'll take me some time, but that will take a relief well or a plug and abandonment that will normally take 30 days and make it done in five days. So yeah. this is what I'm after. I have not with this, because of the situation I just described in part, right? It's not just because it's uh, a monopoly, but also, you know, it's, it's, it's nuanced. It's, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's tricky, mm -hmm. uh, but there's just wasn't a big volume there either. Right. So the yeah. big players weren't really interested, but now with the rise of all these ranging requirements that I just explained, now there's some more kind of, um, attention or focus on this. And, um, I'm able to, um, get the backing that I need, not financially, but just yeah. with industry partners and stuff mm -hmm. like this yeah. to go after building this wild ranging, wild drilling tool. Yeah. And by God, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. It's, Man. It will be done. That's awesome. Uh, I always have a lot of respect for people that make downhole tech or physical tech because when you're making software, cool. You should be able to do that for <laughs> pretty cheap, if not, if yeah. not for nothing, right? Um, downhole tech is a lot different. Uh, you mentioned, I don't know if it was on the podcast or before, you don't have any outside capital or investors. That's correct. Uh, you put up your own money. Um, yeah, this podcast is about, um, entrepreneurs, right? Or yeah, yeah, it's yeah. About entrepreneurs. Yeah. 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 So this uh, way, I mean, we like, we like founder stories cause look, it's hard. It's hard as fuck to build, build things. Crazy hard. So, um, but anyone now will then will be wondering, okay, we're well, where do you get the money to do all this? Right. Well, it's from the sale of the first round yeah. of tools, right? <laughs> and then it's, well, where did you get the money from that? Uh, go and get up against a wellhead that's on fire and they will pay you a lot of money to do that. <laughs> and if you don't spend it on uh, uh, wakeboard boats, boats and F ATVs, F-250s, <laughs> yeah. you too can hire a physicist <laughs> yeah. and make your own magnetic ranging company. No, seriously, guys, how do you get started? Uh, when we did our first tool, right? Our first ranging tool, um, the one that I sold to SDI, I, I was on a, I was on that blowout. I just sold, showed you, actually. I showed you a video of the blowout yeah. for the people who didn't see it. And I just took every, so I went away for four months straight, right? And you get paid mega money when you rest your life. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't in America. That was somewhere that was dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. And so you take all those premiums and all that money and you just simply give it to a physicist and say, we need to do this. <laughs> and then your wife says, why did you just go away for six months? And where's it like, we don't, you know, what, where, where's the, the, the money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, and of course though, the other thing that we had was angel investor. Um, it was a very small amount of money, but when we needed it, we did. Mm -hmm. And that was my business partner's mother. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't a lot of money guys. Like, um, I don't want to talk about the exact yeah. figure. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a lot of money. Uh, uh, figuratively or relatively uh, yeah. to what it takes to run a company like this. But yeah. when you're in a bond, you're in a bond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's it, right? Uh, same, it, now that we're talking about entrepreneur stuff. But shout out, shout out to your business partner's mom too. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, hey, we're fucking making this crazy magnetic. Well, actually, you know what it was? It wasn't even that. It's, it's the, our business plan was, no, it, our business plan was not good. Um, <laughs> we had enough money to build the tools. But what happens when you build a tool uh, um, nah, just, I don't want to get into that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. There are, you need money for uh, legal issues. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Especially need, for hardware. I mean, one way, one way that a hardware business can go away quick is to get sued out of existence. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that's, sure. one, that's one way to make your competitors go does, away. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were literally talking about this morning. So there is, are we? Yeah. I don't remember talking about that, uh, but I was just thinking like you, when you have the the potential to fuck up a multi-million dollar well bore or someone gets hurt, mm. yeah, you, you can you can get sued out of existence. Yeah. All fortunately, that stuff fortunately when you make podcasts, no one no one yet has sued us over a podcast. Yeah. So. But look, uh, I don't want to be too cryptic there's about this. going to be one. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's about to sue my ass yeah. now. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be too cryptic about it. I'll just say it uh, uh, plainly. When you're messing around with intellectual property that is coveted and very, you know, it's um, 
uh, it unlocks a big revenue stream and all that. People get sensitive. You know, companies get sensitive if they think their intellectual property has not been dealt with properly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So business owners out there, this is a, or, or aspiring business owners, this is a part of it, right? It's, it's the legal side, the back of house, all that you need. You need money for uh, you know unintended things like COVID. Guess who didn't get any PPE loans? Canadian didn't didn't not allowed, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know it, it's all these things, these curveballs. You got to be aware of for sure. Yeah. The um, yeah, I mean, just getting to the point of even being able to develop the tool. I mean, uh, capital intensive, both from financial and human capital perspective. I yeah. mean, um, like you said, it's like. Hey, we got to go get smart scientists, physicists yep. that can help us build this. Um, you know, you understood the application and what you needed, but need someone smarter than ourselves to to go build those things, right? And so, but I love, dude, I, Juan, I love the message. Someone asked me on TikTok the other day, like, what's one piece of advice getting started in the oil field? I was like, save your money and invest in yourself. Don't yeah. fucking no. go, don't go get the badass truck and all the Yeti coolers. Like, actually, invest in yourself all that and, stuff and ideas. Nothing. Yeah. It's all so, nothing. Yeah. Yep. And it's easy to do, especially when you're getting that, uh, when you're getting that uh, day rate in that international pay and that all that risk pay. <laughs> funny, funny comment that he just made is like, yeah, I'm on this blowout, but fuck, I'm also in the middle of, you know, Iraq. Or yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, double. I was <laughs> not in Midland. <laughs> yeah, double, double. <laughs> you know, one thing that's funny, I show up to this, uh, I show up to this pad one time south of Fort Worth. And I mean, it's just in the hood and they have razor wire, um, around the uh, location. <laughs> and I asked the company, I'm like, yo, what's up with the, with the razor wire? He's like, this uh, location was robbed at gunpoint three times while they were building it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, am I getting uh safety pay or danger pay out of this? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, that's, ask me about stories after, but that's I no, I was going to say there's a, there's I can't, a, I some, can't run the story. So some other, some other time there's a yeah. uh, whole podcast on just wild will uh, control stories. So yeah. man, this is all really fascinating um you know if someone if someone listening wants to find out more information about y'all's company wants to reach out to you uh what's what's the website where can they find you gunner energy yep. all right and that's g-u-n-n-a-r yeah right? g-u yeah it's a scandinavian yep. thing my uncle was uh uh from sweden i named it after him oh okay cool uh but yeah it's gunnar but gunner energy services all right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> newfie accent i was gonna say yeah. is, is gunner the, the texas white gunner yeah <laughs> gunner. There, there are no newfoundlanders that are saying gunnar energy <laughs> services yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it would like, be one syllable yeah. actually uh, <laughs> yeah. if i had a couple of those drinks right yeah so, so yeah, well, no, uh, gunner energy services yeah. all right cool we'll uh we'll leave a link in the show notes uh man i'm excited to go check it out I, I, this is all fascinating you to guys me. gotta come over man come yeah. to fly to la come yeah. to location check say it less out. yeah it'd be cool man yeah it's, it's really cool you don't have to twist our arms to come out to california yeah. mike umbro wants us to come out there too yeah, we so can make we, we can to, make a big trip make it happen yeah. so yeah. it's both stomping grounds Thank you for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, this I really is, appreciate this you is guys. badass. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Guys, if you enjoy this episode, share it with a friend. Make sure to share it on LinkedIn. Share it on Twitter. Uh, email it. I don't give a shit. Just share it with people. We appreciate the support. We'll catch you next week.